ओम सहना सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर्यंकवाहे तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिषा वह ओं शाति 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 ओं भद्रं कर्णे विष्णुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्ये मक्षभिजत्रा स्थिरंग सुष्टुवागुंसस्तनो व्यशेम देवि तयदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्र वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नाक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा शाति 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 ओं नमो ब्रह्मादिभ्यो ब्रह्म विद्यासंप्रदाय कर्तृभ्यो वंशर्षिभ्यो महद्यो नमो गुरुभ्य सर्वोप्लवरहित प्रज्ञान घन प्रत्यगर्थो ब्रह्मवाहमस्मी ब्रह्मवाहमस्मी ओं शाति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम अज्ञानतिरांध्य ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुन्मीलित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओ सत्यन लभ्यस्तपसाह्येश आत्मा सत्यन लभ्यस्तपसाह्येश आत्मा सम्य ज्ञान ब्रह्मचर्येण नि सम्य ज्ञान ब्रह्मचर्येण नि अंतरीर ज्योतिर्मो हि शुभ्र अंतरीर ज्योतिर्मो हि शुभ्र यं पश्य यत क्षीण दोषा यं पश्य यत क्षीण दोषा आत्मा किं रूप आत्मा द सेल्फ व्हाट इज दट नेचर ऑफ द सेल्फ ज्योतिर्मय शुभ्र दट of the nature of light self effulgence shubraha that which is ever pure that self atma esha atma this atma this i what is the nature of that self pure and which is self effulgent where is it antas sharire it is as though inside the body okay there is no antasharire in a sense inside the body we'll see the word how what does it mean exactly by the word inside the body that which reveals inside the body and that is labhya you know anta pashyanti that is seen that means known or that is recognized how the by whom yataya by yati sanyasina who are the sanyasis or which sanyasis you have to qualify because one may take to sanyasa without necessary preparation so he says satyena labhya tapasa labhya brahmacharyena labhya by sanyasi living a life of truth tapas and brahmacharya ever nityam and how do they gain samyak gnanena labhya they gain 
through clear vision, proper knowledge of the self they gain it. Okay. Samyak nanena labhyaha atma. Ena labhyaha sanyasina. So last time we said samyak nana here means clear knowledge about the self. But gnana here means not simply self. Samyak Gnana, clear knowledge about the world, about Ishvara, and about oneself. What is clear knowledge about the world, Ishvara, and oneself? That all the three are non separate. Or, in other words, all the three are manifestation of only one Vastu. Ekam Sadvipraha Bahudavadanti. Or Sarvam Khaludam Brahma Nehana Anasti Kinchana. In this Upanishad, before few days, we have seen Bada Samana Adhikarita. So, that one Vastu which manifests as all three, seeing the whole meaning, all the three are one. That is called Samyak Nanena. Seeing Ishvara and Jivatma as non separate from oneself. Okay. Labhyaha esha atma, the self is gained. Now, when I say samyagnana, or when you say the knowledge of the whole, how do you gain the knowledge of the whole? The knowledge of the whole is gained through teaching, with the help of a teacher. When one studies the Shastra from a teacher. So, Shravanam is a means. But then which teacher? The teacher who is Shrotriya and Brahmanishta. The teacher who knows the truth. And the teacher who knows how to unfold the truth. That teacher, Samyagnana, he knows it and knows the methodology of teaching. Then student can know it. Okay. Ananya prokte gatiratra nasti and gathopanishad. When Yamaraja says, Ananya Prokte, when a teacher who is Ananya, who knows himself or herself to be one with the Brahman, and the methodology of teaching, Gatihi Nasti, Samsara Gatihi Navarate. There is no going and coming. Other meaning also is there, Ananya Taya Prokte. Teacher reveals Brahman, it's not saying that there is some Brahman which is generally, or Ishvara, which is generally taken as Paroksha. Teacher says, you are that. When teaching is made as a Tattva Masi, then Gatihi Nasti, Samsar Gati Agati Nasti. There is no possibility of going and coming to Janma Marana Chakra. Okay. So, Shavanam is a means. Then why it is said Atma Vare Shrotabhyaha Drashtabhyaha Atma Vare Drashtabhyaha Shrotabhyaha Mantabhyaha Nididhyasitabhyaha That means Mananam is to be done. Mananam is not the means of knowledge. Means of knowledge is Shravanam. By Shravanam of the Shastra, not any Shravanam. Like typical Indian, satsang karta hai. You know, anybody comes and talks anything. And they talk except Brahma Vidya. They talk some Yoga Shastra, some attitudes, some Bhakti Bhakti, and they think they are teaching. There is no teaching in that. So, Shravanam is Shastra Upadesha. Shastra Upadesha. Shastra means Upanishad Upadesha. By this teacher, and, of course, we'll see by, by a student who is ready for it. That is a means. Complete means of knowledge means Shrotriya Brahmanishta Acharyena Patitaha. So, Kim Patitaha? Upanishada. Upanishad Patitaha. One who studies Upanishad. Who God studies? That one who is Satyena, uh, Tapasa, and then, then Brahmacharyena, etc. One who is ready for it. What does Mananam do then? Mananam is meant to eliminate the doubts. When the teaching is made, I mean done, and the teacher is competent enough to teach, 
he unfolds the vision so clearly. While learning, it looks so clear. But one's own mind can pose doubts. Others can pose doubts. When you read something and listen of some other Shastras, Puro Pakshis, it can raise doubts. And when they raise doubt, there is a possibility of, 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 of confusion. So, Mananam is to eliminate all such doubts. So, also Nididhyasanam is not a means by itself. Okay? So, Nipramaya Shanka, what is to be known, is negated. Pramana Shanka is negated. Now, then, what is this Nididhyasanam? What you have listened to, you, it is not again a means of knowledge. In Nididhyasanam, no new knowledge takes place. It, you are just owning up what you have learned. The problem or the nature of this particular ignorance is such that there is a misapprehension. Not only I do not know myself, I know myself otherwise. That knowledge means in other words, the assimilation of knowledge has not taken place. Those samskaras sometimes cloud the vision. By Nididhyasana, you one tries to own up this particular wisdom or the knowledge negating the, the habitual not habitual error. Okay? So, in the Shastric language they say, this is meant to gain nishtha in the knowledge. Mananam is to make the knowledge free from the doubts. Nididhyasanam is to make the knowledge free from any habitual error. You have to reenact what one has learned from the teacher. There is the own up what you have learned from the teacher. That is called Nididhyasanam. So, this three sadhana. So, Samyagnani means Shrotriya Brahma Nishtha Acharyena Upadishtaha Sadhana Chatushtha Sampanna Shichaha Saravan Manana Nididhyasena Samyagnani Pashyati. It all goes in it. He says by this. Pashyati means see means owning up. Understands I am that truth. Now these are technically called as Antaranga Sadhana. The inner means. What are the external means? External means he says one after the Satyena Labhyaha Pasalabhyaha now, Satyam doesn't mean Satyam Namanantam Brahma. That's Satyam. Because that Satyam is to be gained. You are to gain the Satyam. So, Satyam cannot be gained by that Satyam. So, here Satyam, it means truth. Satyam means this Vahvarika Satyam. Satya means with that which is Yathartha Bhuta Satya. What is Satyam? He says, you know, these are all Mrusha Vadana Tyagena, Anrutha Tyagena, Anrutha Tyagena, Mrusha Vadana Tyagena. Okay. Mithya Vachana Tyagena. Anrutha vachanatya. Murusha means mithya. To speak what it is. That is called satyam. To say what it is. That is called satyam. Speaking truth. What happened as it is. And speaking truth means what you think also. Satyam means arjavam also. It is not only with reference to external situation. You speak what it is. 
but at the same time you speak what you think <laughs> what goes on in mind you know samanasi ekam vachasa ekam karmana ekam mahatma so there is an alignment between thoughts words and deeds that is satyam and the definition of duratma is manasi ekam manasi anyat vachasi anya vachasa anya karmana anya duratma it is all there is no alignment any which way of between the three that is called mrushavatnam okay so one who speaks truth speaking truth means this that means one has a courage to accept what is going on in the mind and accept the consequences of telling up front no doubt that doesn't give a license to tell in a harsh way one needs to tell in a satyam vada then comes priyam vada it has to be told in a softer way in a pleasant way but when you tell the truth what you feel that's a courage that's that's a honesty with reference to oneself that is called satyam vada okay now another thing you know that when you speak truth or when you say the truth only that means accepting what it is sometimes speaking truth may bring in inconvenience may cause some loss but there is a readiness to suffer readiness to give up so that is satyam that is strength one if one has that inner strength then only one can speak truth so one who says satyam is a strong person satyena lapya a courageous person a truthful person you can say aligned person with the pursuit of thoughts and connections he gains it satyena lapya okay now last time i had mentioned speaking truth means speaking or living or adhering to all other values common sense values or ethical values it implies speaking truth means following non violence ahimsa being straight forward ahimsa arjavam etc all the values because when you have one value the rest will come it will automatically come in your persona there was satyam means this and satya also means vishesha dharma va vishesha dharma means depending upon the position of a person in a given society that that is expected to perform certain deeds what you are expected to do certain things depending upon your position as a brother as a sister as a husband as a wife as a father as a son all that is involved in it and that that person who is who is who who who, who performs vishesha that vishesha dharma is both shrautam and smart and it is discovered by common sense like paying income tax in india is a visheshata paying income tax in us is an again a visheshata depending upon the tax structure etc so satyena labhya means one who speaks truth that means one who is committed to samanya dharma and visheshata visheshata dharma includes cultural values like american culture in greeting may mean hello how are you shaking hand they just don't know hi swami they say <laughs> and there is another word you know that this insensitive on that part in the beginning i used to feel very much hurt when they say you know the children used to say dad you are going out okay he say yeah i am taking swami ji to this place to lecture in the evening i love oh you guys are going out you guys as though you are guys you know? <laughs> swami ji is a guy for them it's a cultural thing you have to accept that 
So, Satya means committing to cultural forms, cultural values, social values, ethical values, and your position, what it calls for, certain duties to be done, you do it. Satya Okay? Now, Tapasa It is Tapasa by Tapas. Now, what do you mean by Tapasa? Tapas means Shankaracharya Ji writes, Manasa, Manasaha cha Indriyanam hi Aikagram Paramam Tapas. Tapas means religious discipline. A discipline given by religion. There can be common sense discipline. <laughs> there can be some other discipline in the life. People follow all kinds of disciplines. It's been like even diet discipline. <laughs> That's a self-imposed discipline. Healthcare discipline. Now we are not talking of that discipline. What we are saying is purely religious. When that means the discipline which involves Ishwara. Last time I said to them somewhere here, one may go for a walk in, in three kilometers and when may go for it, Bhagavad Darshanam to see the Lord to temple just one and a half kilometers. But that is tapas, self-imposed discipline to walk. I can afford a vehicle. I do have a vehicle and a chauffeur. But I just refuse to do a, use it and go walking. That becomes tapas. Understand? <laughs> People say, Swamiji, we are coming to your temple quite often, but you are not. They say me. Then the guy said, yeah, yeah, I have to keep traveling. And then generally I am not here. Or really we had come this almost thrice a week we come. And then I am surprised. How come this person is coming thrice a week? I thought it may be because of Corona, he might be coming. I just gave him. Then I realized okay, he comes for morning cycling without bath you know, in a track pant and track shirt and then parks it and have darshan. So darshanam is not tapas. He is not doing cycling for Bhagavan. He is doing cycling for himself. So religious discipline it means it involves that what it involves Bhakti Ishvara. Satya, when I say Nitya Naimitti Karma, it also involves, you know, Ishvara. Because you have to perform those karmas as an order of the Ishvara. As Ishvara Chha. That's what that is done. And tapas also is performed keeping Ishvara in the center. This is very important discipline for a seeker. That it gives must, it makes you worship. You slowly become master of yourself. You learn to learn to master, you, you direct and master and direct your sense organs. See this each one of us has some limitations with reference to given sense object. And that sense object is though pulls the fact. Indriyani hayana ho visham steshu vochara. Atmendriya mano yuktam bhuktatya hur manisha. That fellow is driven. The chariot of the life is driven to towards the sense organs. I mean sense objects by sense organs. To, by tapas, you learn to master your horses, control your horses. Sadashvaha ivasat. When horses are trained, when horses are controlled, then you can take the chariot to the destination. What is the destination? Then Vishnu Paramam Padam. He gains that Vishnu Padam. Means he reaches moksha. He or she, whatever. So, Satyena labhyaha tapasa hyesha atma. Tapas means, means self-imposed certain discipline. And disciplines are imposed as a prayer to the Lord, as, 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 as an offering to the Lord. 
not otherwise. Simply not eating is dieting. And Ekadashi, not eating is fasting. That fasting is religious thing. That religious life. You know, tapas involves religious commitment and acceptance of Ishwara. When you accept Ishwara, then only tapas is possible. And this lot of praise has been told in Shastra about tapas. Bhagavan says, Yagno dhanam tapas chaiva natyajam karya meva. It must be performed, yagna and dhana and tapas. One must perform tapas. Why? Yagno dhanam tapas chaiva bhavanani manishnam. It gives you purity. It gives in antakarana shuddhi, which is a prerequisite for the self. Satyena labhyaha stapasalabhyaha. How does it give when there is a manas? Then what happens? You gain mastery over the what? Manaschendriyanamcha hekagram paramam tapaha. One learns to control. One learns to master one's own sense. It becomes shama and thereby dhamma. So then one shama dhamma is there and shraddha is there. The rest of the qualities will follow. Therefore, emphasis is given on tapas. You cannot have tapas without Ishvara in the center. Ishvara in the center means you have to accept Ishvara. You have to accept Ishvara and then only you can have tapas. There is non-denial of Ishvara. Sometimes people say, Swamiji, I don't believe in Ishvara. Those who don't believe in Ishvara, it is because of, to some extent, ahankar. It is because of incapacity to surrender. That the person might have lost the trust to surrender. And that incapacity to surrender leads them to say, I don't accept Ishvara. So many people, especially in India. I mean, one other day, just a few days ago, one lady, very senior, well learned doctor, specialist. I just want my son to be a good human being. I don't want him to do bhakti. I don't want him to go to temple. But then he goes or not, it's his choice. But I don't want. I just want to make him a good human being. I said, what's a good human being? Living a life of ethics, doing some seva, doing charity. That's okay. Unless you have religious life, one cannot have antakarna shuddhi. Ethical life also should be backed by proper attitude. Attitude of the ethical life also should be lived in the awareness of each other. Then one can gain necessary purity of the mind. So, tapas means acceptance of Ishwara. And they say, I don't accept Ishwara or I don't need Ishwara. But one need to understand. One has, one has no choice. If one wants to be happy or to be at peace, live a peaceful life, but to relate to Ishwara, why? You know, <laughs> which Ishvara you have to relate, why you have to relate and accept. See, each one of us are born ignorant. So there is a sense within us that I am limited. I am Parichinna, I am Dukhi. There is a sense. And in the self-awareness, in that self-consciousness, or in which you know yourself, self-identity, there is a feeling that I am incomplete. Always. There is a feeling I am insufficient. 
and you are born with certain vasana samskaras likes and dislikes you have no choice i am incomplete that is bound to be there because i is identified with the body so limitations of the body mind complex are superimposed upon i and i would certainly feel limited and that sense of being limited centered on i is not acceptable to me i want to get rid of it and how do i become complete how do i become happy i feel this is this is maya i am unhappy or incomplete because of world and therefore if i restructure the world then i will be complete and happy that's how thinking is so i want to restructure why because my incompleteness is caused by the world. my unhappiness is caused by the world. i am unhappy why which i is unhappy oh, i am a very unhappy as but why i am happy father why are you unhappy father because my son or daughter is not studying well okay so what no 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 i wanted them to be doctor since i am a doctor i wanted them to go into medicine i can see from 8th and 9th grade this fellow will not make it to 12th science stream also he may opt for commerce and arts so i am unhappy with the son so my unhappiness is caused by a son who in my opinion is irresponsible or he is not doing what he should have been doing he is not pursuing the goal which he or she should have been pursuing that means as a father i am i don't want to see myself a father of a son who is not a doctor that's my problem <laughs> the problem lies there i don't want to be a father whose son is not a doctor so the problem is you and we impute the problem to the world outside and we keep on restructuring the things outside you know so the obtaining situation obtaining world of people and the objects and the beings is is whatever it is obtaining is is not acceptable to me as it is i can't accept my mother as it is i can't accept my father as he is can't accept my spouse as he is as she is so let's i can accept my husband as he is my son and my daughter and and my my body also i can't accept as he is. i have some problem this is not good this is not good this uh, throw for it is not good something or other there is always a problem with myself non acceptance there is always a complaint you know <laughs> and then this obtaining people obtaining situation obtaining objects about which i have a complaint galore they are not separate from ishwar <laughs> unless i see that way that complaining i will not go that problem will persist you have to neutralize that complaining i relatively that can be neutralized only when you accept the obtaining jagat as manifestation of one non dual vastu then karma yoga is possible as our gujarati ji say ram rakhe tam rahiye i can i live as rama wants me to live rama doesn't want you to live any which way but rama may think whether you live or not doesn't make difference to me but any why the point here is the karma phala data whatever karma i i must have done in the janmas past the phalam that i am getting today whatever it is it is so that acceptance of external situation as it is comes only when one has ishwara in one's own life then ishwara is accepted so dharma is very much important i mean tapas is very much important without that tapas without ishwara in life today or tomorrow it will cause some psychological problem a child may have what all it wants but sometimes you don't cannot buy what you want even though you have a lot of money 
once you're growing. When that creates a problem of dukkha, etc. Here it is said that one who has accepted Ishvara as karma falada, accepted Ishvara as karma daksha, that person tapasa. That is the purpose of tapas. By doing tapas, mind becomes disciplined. By doing tapas, the, the energy that is focused, you know, you gain energy that is focused. In absence of tapas, it is all scattered. Indriyanam hi charatam yan manonu vidhiyate tadasya harati pragnam vayur navimam. See, when the tapas is not there, life is tossed hither and thither. So, tapas is necessary. Okay? Prayer helps you to neutralize your pain. Prayer helps you to accept the things as it is. And that is why Bhagavan says, Rishi says, Tapasa Labya. And next one is Brahmacharyena Labya. It is gained through Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya doesn't mean mastery or control of only one sense of Brahmacharya means mastery over all sense organs, one and all, that acceptance of all sense organs. Why? That is also not the Tatpariya. Tatpariya Brahmacharya here means a way of life. What way of life? Guru Kula Vasa. <laughs> a Brahmachari, when a child is given Yagno Poet Diksha, and next day he becomes a brahmachari. Then he goes to Guru Seva, Guru Kulavas. So brahmacharyena labhya means ante vasina labhya. One who is living in proximity with the teacher, who is living with the teacher, he gains it. Why it is said in proximity with the teacher and with the teacher only gains? Why cannot I gain the self-knowledge by living with me? Living at home. Why should I stay at ashram only? Understand. And then if that is the case, why you? You are teaching Upanishad to Brahastas. <laughs> That's true. But here the next word is Yatayaha. Yata, the word here in this mantra is Satyena Labbis Tapasa Yesha Atma Samyak Nanena Brahmacharyena Nityam Antasharire Jyotir Mayohi Shubraha Yam Pashyanti Yatayaha Kshinam. That word Yatayaha, along with Brahmacharya, it means a life of Guru Guru. The living in the proximity of the Jamin, doing Swadhyaya study at the exclusion of everything else. That is a problem. You can study Shastra by working in the office. But when you work in the office, then the knowledge doesn't stay. It doesn't get established. Because you listen and then whole day you're busy and doing something or other in the office. So mind is not focused. Mind doesn't remain committed. So unless there is a commitment by lifestyle, it cannot help you as much as it helps her. Lifestyle. Therefore, it's a Brahmacharya. Then Nityam word is Shankaracharya says Dehli Deepaka Antar Deepika Nyayena Anushakta Vyaha Sarvatra Nityashakta. That when a lamp is placed between the two rooms, the light spreads in both rooms. That similarly, the truth is spread here in between. It, it, it is it spreads to everything means satyam nityam satyena labhya nityam tapasa labhya nityam brahmacharyena labhya it should not be spasmodic brahmacharya It is not that sometimes I do bhakti. Once a week I do bhakti. And otherwise I don't do bhakti. 
doesn't work. Sometimes I do tapas. Rest of the time I don't do tapas. It doesn't work. But I have to live always a lifestyle. This means Nityam is a lifestyle. Guru Gulavasa with some tapas for oneself and Brahmachari also for self. By which this self is gained. Now, by which means these are the Bahiranga sadhana, technically called as Sahakari sadhana. Supportive means to gain the knowledge. Now, Father uh, says, Nityam means always, all the time committed to Satyam, all the time committed to Brahmacharya, and all the time committed to Tapas. That's the primary goal. And that person gains the Atma. How does one gain the Atma? Then Samya Gnana. Then this has to do with all the things. Nityam Satyena, Nityam Tapasa, Nityam Brahmachaya. Then Nityam Samya Gnana is not necessary. Lavate the child. Who gains? This fellow gains. How does he gain? And it says Yatayaha, that cell which is Antashari Re Shumaraha Jyotirmaya. The one who is inside body. Here the word inside is only taken to be Laksha. Atma is not inside the body. In fact, if you want to say inside, outside, body is inside Atma. And further, body is not separate from Atma. It is not inside. So, that meaning of the word inside doesn't apply here. It is not possible. Inside, what does it mean? This body is is a means as though to recognize the self. Human body, that antakarana being fully of the consciousness as aham, aham, aham in antakaranam. And antakaranam is as though inside. That we have seen Earlier, what is inside and outside while well, discussing in Panchakosha? Therefore, it is says Antashari. Antashari means which Sharira? Sukshma Sharira. And when you say Sukshma Sharira, means where? Buddha. In Buddhi. What is in Buddhi? <laughs> there is no Buddhi without Atma. <laughs> but in Buddhi means that which manifests as Buddhi, as all the Vritti. Inside Vritti is like seeing a gold inside chain, seeing clay inside pot. Seeing the pot as clay and seeing the chain as gold, that is in that sense it is inside Antashrire. What is this Atma? Shubha, it is pure. Pure means asana. Anything what is impurity, that which is not true to its nature, in that is impurity. Particles of copper, little copper in a golden ornament is impurity. But copper in a copper vessel is not impurity. It's swarup, but it's not a swarup of the golden ornament. Anything that is foreign is impurity. So what is ultimate impurity is ignorance. Ultimate impurity is, is a ahankara, karta bhokta. So shubraha, that means the self that is free from karta The self that is free from ahankara. Means there is no impurity within it. Means there is the ignorance is also a dharopita. Ignorance doesn't have any 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 independent existence other than the self. Okay, 
the ignorance is superimposed. And that Atma remains Asangaha even while there is self ignorance. Okay? It is called Asangaha, untouched, unconnected, unaffected. That is Shubraha, pure. Or Shubra means of the nature of consciousness. And that is seen by Yatayaha, means striving. Yati means one who strives, one who is committed to self knowledge. That Yati, Ashanti sees. When they see Kshina Dosha, when all impurities are as though almost you can say eliminated, when the mind becomes free from impurities, they Pashyanti. Pashyanti means seeing. Seeing is not seeing computer or seeing at this lecture. Pashyanti means knowledge. they gain the knowledge without any doubts and error. Clarity that is in the sense of clarity and kshina dosha ha, that impurity of ignorance is gone and ignorance caused ragadveshas ignorance caused this shat dripu hukama krodha lobha madha moha matsarya they are free from this in the jargon of Bhagavad Gita ji, you can say free from likes and dislikes when the mind is free from ragadveshas that mind is relatively free from impurities, then they know the self which is ever pure and that ever pure, it being ever pure, this is this is relatively ever pure. To get that relative purity, thereby one can own up absolute purity, these sadhanas are external means are satya, brahmacharya and tapas always internal means is Shravana, Manana, and Nitityasana by gates. We will see next mantra in the next class. Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnhat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnam Hevava Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namah Hari Om